uh, back with the series that nobody has been asking for and probably no one is watching, but I like it. So there's that. So this episode is called the one with the sonogram at the end. Um, in this beginning clip, we see something that happens a lot, at least in the first few seasons, uh, where the friends, the main cast, are the only reasonable people in the world. Everyone they interact with is very extreme and extremely aggressive. Although, this lady's not too bad. No, it's good. It, it is good. Uh, it's just that, doesn't she seem a little angry? Well, she has issues. Does she? He's out banging other women over the head with a club while she sits at home trying to get the mastodon smell out of the carpet. Marsha, see, these are cave people. Okay, they have issues like, gee, that glacier is getting kind of close. See? Speaking of issues, isn't that your ex-wife? My, no. No? Yes, it is. Carol, hi! Okay, yes, yes it is. Uh, how about I'll uh, catch up with you in the Ice Age? So Ross's fiance Carol shows up and brings some big news to him. But if you've seen this series before, you'll recognize that this isn't the actress that they use normally. They end up changing her out pretty quickly, uh, probably for good reason. I think the other actress and Ross have much better chemistry together. Um, but it doesn't really matter right now. The uh, at the end of this clip, there's a there's a joke about Ross turning into a caveman when he gets afraid about becoming a dad and uh it's probably one of the few times where the joke actually is earned like you know sitcoms and pregnancy it pretty much consistently the father turns into an idiot um this would be a much harder situation than just finding out your wife or your girlfriend is pregnant i would assume i don't know it seems like it would be so what's new? Still, uh... A lesbian? Well... <laughs> you never know. How's, um... How's the family? Uh, Marty's still totally paranoid. Oh, and not so Carol, why, why are you here, Carol? I'm pregnant. Pregnant. Ha! <laughs> 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 huh. Looks like she didn't leave in such a hurry after all. Oh, I think this is the episode of Three's Company where there's some kind of misunderstanding. <laughs> you remember in X-Men Apocalypse when they talk about the third movie in a franchise is always the worst, which was kind of poking fun at X3 without realizing that they're making fun of themselves. That's what I feel like this joke is because Friends becomes very formulaic. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> now, it's jokes like those that I that I find funny, that I appreciate about the show. Uh, they're not things that you see coming or you really set up. They kind of catch you off guard because it's based on a misunderstanding. And uh, Phoebe and Joey, I think, do those really well. Uh, they're probably my favorite characters out of the six. No, I had it this morning. I know I had it when I was in the kitchen with... Dinah? <laughs> oh, don't be mad. You didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave you one job. Oh, but look how straight those noodles are. <laughs> now, Monica, you know that's not how you look for an engagement ring in lasagna. I just can't do it. Boys? We're going in. So Rachel's getting ready to go and take her engagement ring back to her ex-fiance and lost it in lasagna that Monica is making for her parents who are coming to visit and she's real stressed about it and stuff. Uh, Monica's a chef. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like a chef should be able to handle whipping up something fairly quickly. I mean, I guess if you don't have the ingredients, but I don't know, it just seems... Like, I mean, yeah, it's a setback, but not not that big of a deal. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm wrong. 
I apologize if you hate that joke as much as I do, but I'm going to point it out every time it happens. No matter what I do, though, I'm still going to be a father. Well, this is still ruined, right? I always wonder how this show would do if it never had a laugh track. Um, because I, I think that's a funny moment, but is that because I'm being influenced? Like, if it was just dead silent, would it just seem mean? Edwin's daughter is going to call you. Hmm, what's that curry taste? Curry. Mmm. <laughs> I, I, I think they're great. I, I, I really do. I, mm, you remember the Ludwins. Well, the big one had a thing for you, didn't she? Yeah. They all had a thing for him. I think the show is really good at establishing characters and their relationship. Uh, you know instantly from this short interaction that Monica's mom is just kind of overly critical of everything Monica does. Ross is always trying to protect Monica from her parents and their dad is just kind of aloof. Um, I think that sums it up pretty well throughout the series. Like their, their relationship changes and grows a little bit here and there, but it's pretty consistent. And I, I think Friends is really good at starting that. Um, maybe because they use uh, caricatures of people you know they they're kind of one note so it's easier to know exactly what you're looking at and that gets stale after a while that might be part of the issue that the show has it's going to sound unbelievably selfish on my part but were you planning on bringing up the whole baby lesbian thing because I, I think it might take some of the heat off me <laughs> so these characters are, are pretty terrible people uh, they're really selfish and they I don't understand why they're friends I mean obviously Monica and Ross are brother and sister but throughout this whole series you see them just do kind of mean things that I can't imagine my friends doing to me and wanting to be around them still no news no little anecdotes to share with the folks okay, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> look I uh, I realize you guys have been wondering what exactly happened between Carol and me, and so, well, here's the deal. Carol's a lesbian. She's living with a woman named Susan. She's pregnant with my child. And she and Susan are going to raise the baby. That's got to be the best way, right, to get all that information out, just to spew it out. Like, I don't think there's dipping your toe into all that information. And you knew about this? So that's a pretty funny joke. I think I was a little unfair when I first started doing this, saying that I really dislike the show and I, that it's not really funny. Because it does have good jokes. It's just surrounded by a lot of bad ones, too. Folks are really that bad, huh? Well, you know, these people are pros. <laughs> they know what they're doing. They take their time. They get the job done. Also, the laugh track. The laugh track really bothers me. I know I said it before, but just to go along with that last point I made. How's this going to work, <clears throat> you know, with us? You know, when, like, important decisions have to be made? Give me a for instance. Well, I, I don't know. Um, okay, okay. How about with the, uh, the baby's name? Marlon. Marlon. If it's a boy, Minnie, if it's a girl. <laughs> As in mouse? <laughs> As in my grandmother. Still, you, you say Minnie, you hear mouse. <laughs> um, how about, um, how about Julia? Julia. We agreed on Minnie. It's funny, um, uh, we agreed we'd spend the rest of our lives together. Things change, roll with the punches. <laughs> I believe Julia's on the table. Now, I know it's a sitcom, I know it's a comedy, but I feel like comedies that understand moments of drama 
improve the moments of comedy. And I feel like this really deflated it by adding in that Minnie Mouse joke. Um, because there's a lot of conflict here, right? You have Ross, who's the father, coming inside of uh, Carol and Susan's relationship, who are effectively going to be raising who turns out to be Ben. And so that dynamic is something that could really be played with and really you know, poked at and explored. And it would cause a lot of tension. So when the moments of comedy happen, when something funny happens, it's it's a release. You're you're you you feel better <laughs> when that happens. And I don't know. I feel like again, maybe it's just me being overly critical. But I feel like deflating that tension is just hurting its 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 itself. Bye back. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go. Um, I don't I don't think I can be involved in this particular family. Oh my God! Look at that! I know. So I have three kids myself, and that moment you see them and you know that they're alive and they have you know a heartbeat and they have a shape and a head and all that weird alien looking textures that's going on it's amazing how connected you are to them and there's really not any situation that i would find myself in or that i can imagine that i wouldn't work through to be a part of their lives so like this this moment I completely get and I think it's 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 good so that was basically uh, the second episode of the first season and actually these first two episodes haven't been as bad as I thought uh, they're definitely gonna get worse it's definitely gonna start feeling repetitive and played out but again I think they do a good job at establishing things and setting things up it's kind of the payoffs where they seem to drop the ball somewhat.